say you are doing an active preparation, Dr. Rotto, and uh, there's a lot of bleeding. Is there any agent that you use to stop all that bleeding, like to help it once you have removed the, the pulp chamber? If you, if you can get into the pulp chamber, if you have chair time, you just start cleaning the canals. And of course, as you remove pulp, you arrest bleeding. But if you didn't really have a lot of time, and you needed to let them go because you were squeezing them in, so usually a pulpotomy could work on an emergency. It's bleeding a lot. What I would like you to do is maybe put a cotton pellet in it, dry, and pack it down and leave the room for three or four minutes. Just dry. Yeah, or, or with uh, one to 50,000. Okay. Anesthesia. Okay. And just push it down. Do, do, you, do you have any ferric sulfate in the office? Yes. Oh, you could put a little cotton pledge it with ferric sulfate and pack it down and then take a plugger and push and then leave for three or four minutes, go make a check, phone call, write a record, come back, take out that cotton pellet and it's probably completely arrested. Okay. So if you have ferric sulfate, that's even more powerful than one to 50,000. Okay. Even though one to 50 is a great vasoconstrictor. Yeah. Okay, what we can do, that's, I'm just gonna look at all these first that are open. Okay, let's look at this one. Well, hon, one of your first problems is you got these incredibly calcified teeth. I mean, where are these people coming from? God, they have like nothing but stones. She sent Mark out at Mark went out and found so we have no idea. Okay, hold that. Well, Mark got you some toughies. Tell him thank you. Okay. Mark. Well, what do you think this is? It's another big rock. Well, let's just touch this up. Now, this access is quite good. Uh, you're not really finding canals really easy, but everybody, what, what's been done is very nice. I'm just going to smooth this up to the light uh, so I can get the light in here better. Uh huh? Does anybody in the use a microscope? I think there were three. So there's that one. There's that one. So let's take this wall back. I want you to, I want you to probe with this, and I want you to push so hard. Sometimes I'll take my offhand thumb and I'll put it right here, and as I push, I'll go like this, and say to the patient, "You're going to feel some heavy pressure. You're going to be fine." Okay. I just don't want you to think I'm roughhousing today. <laughs> And then, because it's a lot safer to push hard and pop through a half a millimeter of dentin and find the canal than to start drilling, and now we have a big problem. So it's okay. I go through these like you go through ten files. You're bending your ten files, throwing it out. I collapse these almost after every visit, and we toss out oh, the explorer. Wow. So you use uh, files only one visit? Yeah, pretty much yeah. one. Every, okay. every patient gets a set of files. So back to this, I have a little catch there, do you see it? That little, here I'll just show you this way. Is this the 20s ones? 21s, yeah. Okay, so we can, I can show you where it is. It's right there, okay. So I, my access needs to go out a little bit more, doesn't it? Because if you look at my file, it's coming out, it's coming out off axis. Say off axis? Off axis. And we want to get it on axis? On axis. Okay, perfect. Now you're thinking like Ruddle. So that's a bad thing though. <laughs> okay, so now we're just going to put the diamond against this wall. See how the tip's in though? Because if I put the tip where you want, you can't see. So this is going to make me cut upstairs, up here. So toe the diamond in, it'll make you cut with the big part right there, and here we go. You can see perfectly, you just keep going until, until the tip comes over and touches it. Does that make sense? OK, 
okay. But now notice how flat my wall is. So I can see really well, I have good lighting in here. So now you're going, well, I think it's a little bit better. See? See, the file's way better. It was like that, and now it's like that. And I can even get it a lot better than that. And then we have this one. Ooh, that's not going anywhere, is it? That's got a rock, probably a stone in there still. So we gotta be very, very careful. Yeah, we're gonna be okay. This one's even better. I like that better. And this one we know is really dangerous. There's a big stone in here. So let me try something there, and we might use ultrasound just to blast that out. Sometimes you just go like this. And I can almost grab it. So in other words, you're used to doing crown and bridge and you got this thing going really fast. Sometimes for endo, you're just doing this little job and you're just brushing with the tip. And so you just, it's really safe. It's very safe. Does that make sense? And then we got this broken root. You can see it. It's interesting, but it's, 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 uh, Ridiculous, oh my God, Ridiculous Omeris or something is the name of this tooth, but I'm not quite right. But there's a dot, see that dot? Yes. The dot, remember the dot. If it bleeds and it's vital, that would be a red dot. If it's a necrotic case, it might be a white dot. And that's gonna be it right there. But anyways, that's, that's not the normal. That, that that's not normal. So we won't screw around with that too much. <laughs> But I still have, do you have an ultrasonic tip? Uh -huh. Hand me like a skinny one. Any, almost anything. Uh, something thinner. Go over to the gold, just grab a thin one. Um, three or four? Oh, three, I get four. And we wouldn't need to do that necessarily. We could get a headstrom. Do we have a headstrom? Okay, perfect, okay. I'll refer this to you. <laughs> well, no, but I want you to do, I want you to refer the ones that you don't want to, you know, have a bad day with, but I want you to grow and, and begin to reach to cases that you can do because you'll, you'll, you'll get better and you'll get better quickly and your confidence will go way up. You just, you know what you need to do? You need to access like 10 teeth. Yes. Okay, so we could probably slide a headstrom in here, but she's not really that interested in this babe because she wants to just see accesses. I get it. Okay, well that basically blew it out. There it is. So now, you know, you could just take this file and, you know, basically it's going down nicely. So that's fine. So we have concepts to go back and look at. There, you can see my accesses are always quite a bit bigger than yours. But it's not because Ruddle's just tired or old. The size of the access is based on where, okay, so this dictates, yep. Yeah. So over here was your DB, so you have to go clear over to here. Your palatal's over here. So it's not arbitrary, it's based on where the orifices are, and so then that dictates the hole.